Hey, hey everyone. Oh, we finally have a bit of a breeze and actually started raining. So back to this usual weather. But for two days we had the summer come back and it was um, 27 degrees and it was lovely and well, a bit too hot for UK. But yeah, I ended up going to the Botanical Garden in Cambridge with Mason and that was good fun, although really, really hot it felt at times. But we've done the nice um, trail where kind of kids have to, they get like a little booklet and then they have to go around and read about certain plants and get a stamp in their booklet and yeah. So that was a lot of fun and just seeing all the different plants and things. We've been to the botanical garden with my husband in July for our wedding anniversary. Just, I thought something nice and easy and pleasant. It was good weather as well on that day. So it was nice to see just a development of certain flowers. I try to find a flower that I can insert an image in. I'm not planning to insert too many images because it just takes so much time to edit those type of videos. But there was this really interesting plant that kind of climbed onto the wall and it has these like green type of it almost looked like berries with a bit of white around and a cluster of them, like a nice little, you know, snowball. And it looked beautiful, but I thought that was it. Very unusual, never seen it before. And what's interesting, now it has opened up, like one of them has opened up into a proper snowball with loads of white, beautiful flowers. And when you look at it, you'd never realize that that is the same thing, like this is how it started. Yeah, it was beautiful, it was really, really lovely. And there's a little pond where you can put your hands in, like it's um, at your sort of waistline, and you put your hand in and there's tiny little fish that nibble in your hands. Like, they remind me a little bit of the pedicure. Now, I didn't do it because I, I get freaked out by this sort of stuff, uh, but loads of people did it and Mason did it too. And he said it was quite funny because it felt like they were just tickling his hand. It was beautiful, but of course we are now first week. What is the date today? Yeah, we're the 12th of August today as I'm filming. And uh, pretty much almost middle of August. And let me tell you, it's been a few weeks of half term and I am exhausted. Like those few weeks, I actually was really enjoying the time. The weather was on and off, mostly not great, but we were still doing things. We were going out every day, pretty much every day, doing different things. And it felt so nice to just be off schedule and not restricted to any times, you know, going to bed a bit later and waking up a bit later and just enjoying like watching movies to get a cuddle up um, under blanket and all of those moments I really really kind of treasure and they're super super special yeah so it can be tough on me so I do enjoy a certain period of time but then of course like I'm not a superhero you know um all of the other house chores and a uh, bit of work that I try to squeeze in I try as hard as I can in the month of June and July before the summer holidays kick in and try to do my best and prepare my you know workload so that it's covered mostly for the rest of the summer while uh, Mason is at home I try to do as little work as possible and generally that is after he goes to bed and he goes a little bit later to bed obviously on the summer holidays as I said after that I go to my desk and I start working where most people just kick off and watch like a lovely movie and just relax I only had a few few of those days uh, during the summer holiday mostly it's just going back to my desk and trying to get a bit of um, work done so yeah, all of that said, I am feeling like my batteries are pretty drained at this point and um, I'm looking forward to a bit of vacation. At least I don't have to do cooking and laundry and all of those things. But to be honest with you, cooking is something that I do enjoy and I do struggle if we go to a hotel that doesn't, you know, looks good. Uh, on the cover <laughs> but the food is not that great food for me is so important um, and when the food is not great I always I get a little bit nervous before I get to, to the hotel thinking is it gonna be okay or is it just going to be like mediocre because I miss like few days into this 
you know, mediocre food, I start missing the food that I pre prepare for myself at home and how it looks and how it tastes and all of that. So to me, food is really, really, really important. I have also prepared my summer reads. So I bought, um, you know, just the regular vacation book and I started reading a little bit of it and it's a, a perfect book where you don't need a brain <laughs> to read it. <laughs> Sorry if it sounds a bit offensively, uh, but it's just one of those reads that you don't need to think about anything. It it's kind of feels like it's written by... Um, no, I won't go into that. Anyway, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I've read much better books. I think after Eat, Pray, Love, I don't think anything ever came close to that book. That book I just devoured on a holiday in... Uh, where was it? Tunisia, that's it. And um, yeah, that was just so, so beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful holiday reads I've ever done. Well, it was, it was, it was not one of them. It was the most beautiful. So that is that. I will be closing my online shop for a couple of weeks in August. And I need to figure out how to do that because on Etsy, you know, I've been running it for years, so I knew how to do it there. But I'm pretty sure I should be able to do it on Shopify as well. Since I touched a little bit on the online shop, let me talk to you about, just briefly, I won't go too much into it, uh, why I had to get a Shopify account on top of my Squarespace. So I built a website. Let's backtrack a little bit. There were loads of issues on Etsy that started in the beginning of the year so I wasn't paid my own money and in the end it was like was it close to 2,000 pounds it was 1,700 1,900 something like that that they were keeping and then paying out throughout a few months so they just dragged it out for no good reason everything that would qualify for them to do this i.e like a penalty. Um, none of those things actually happened on my shop. Like there was no penalty for me. I have done nothing wrong. I have done nothing different. It just out of blue happened one day and it actually took me a few weeks to realize that my shop uh, was put on hold. Uh, it's called Reserve. And actually, interestingly enough, um, there was an article on BBC now about the Etsy um, come down. And they, yeah, so I actually want to read um, about it. I was hoping to read about it so I could tell you more about the article, but I haven't had a chance. And so, yeah, it's now in the open that Etsy, like, just completely ruins um, people that, you know, sell their products there. One thing as well, uh, before I get into the current setup of my website and online shop, I, I didn't mention this, but I really wanted to. So one of the UK YouTubers who runs small business, what I found fascinating is that a while ago, this is well, like a few months, well into what I've been dragged into by Etsy and how much financial distress they have caused me. This YouTuber then announces that they were invited to the headquarters of Etsy in the US. And I was like so tempted to write in the comments that, are you not aware of what's happening on Etsy? Surely they would be aware. I mean, I'm not the only person who has struggled. There is like BBC talking about it now. I mean, it took about, you know, six months, a bit too late, but it, it had to take time for someone like BBC to pick up on it. And it obviously is a major issue. Um, so it is a Ponzi skin. Like what I thought initially when it happened, my first gut feeling was it's a Ponzi skin. It has to be a Ponzi skin. Um, and also I think I watched a um, documentary just around that time, just before it happened, about Ponzi scheme in America. And yeah, this was like, this is it. It just looks and sounds exactly like that. So this YouTuber does it then and never do they actually feel the obligation to the many 
thousands and I don't know, I don't remember what the, is it over 100,000, something like that, subscribers to actually be transparent and honest and say, look, you know, at least after they went there, because obviously they were paid to do that, right? And I just, this is something that really rubs me the wrong way up on YouTube. YouTubers who do anything for a few pennies, like, you know, doesn't matter how dishonest it is, doesn't matter how ethically wrong it is, they'll sell you something because they're being paid to sell it. And that to me, like, done, done. The trustworthiness for that channel, for that YouTuber is, is gone. And there have been actually quite a few that I had to stripe off my list, really um, have been. I might do a separate video on that, but anyway. So yeah, just, just be really careful who you trust on YouTube, I'd say. If someone starts, you know, from a crafting background, suddenly becomes a self-proclaimed artist, and suddenly decides to put an extraordinary high price onto something that is not of the value and then suddenly they self-publish a book now anyone can self-publish a book today i think that's the problem that <laughs> there is just suddenly you know you can call yourself a doctor what do we know if that person is actually a doctor, a qualified doctor? What do we know? What the qualifications are? Uh, or they are life coach suddenly, or one day they're this, one day they're that. I think there is just, there should be a limit of how much BS, you know, uh, a YouTuber can, can sell. And how do you control that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe YouTube will think of it. But to me, I see through BS so, so quickly. And... Once I catch on to it, you know, that's it. So coming back to why I then had to obviously leave Etsy. So I, as soon as I realized what was happening, I started taking down all of my products because they kept on doing it to all of my sales going like for months and months. And also what was happening is that there was no clear communication on when this would end and I was basically getting responses to my emails through AI and it was you know very clear so there was no way to get around it in any other way and I basically then decided okay the best thing to do is I'm going to take everything off and then they did pay out all of my money and what was interesting is that within days, so it might have been a Thursday or a Friday that everything was paid out and I was like, thank goodness, because really I thought I was done, like that, that money would never be returned to me because of how serious the situation was with them. Uh, and I thought there's just no way they would find sellers people's, well, the, the money that they took from us that they would be able to pay it. Obviously, they kind of just prolonged whatever they stole from us, they prolonged and then they returned it. Uh, but they did steal the money for that period of time because for a few months, that really affected my business quite badly. And I'm speaking like for myself, but I know so many other people that it just ruined them because they were paying their bills with that. And some of the people that was they had to pay their rents and, and and whatever with that money. At least I had some savings, which I had to deep into. But do you see what I mean? I mean, I, everything just messed up because I couldn't invest money into new products uh, to generate more income. So I really had uh, a decrease of income for a few months. I couldn't pay myself an income. So that was serious, serious, serious crime in my in my view. But you know, how do you sue those people? How do you get anywhere with them um, around it? I mean, it could take years, I suppose, because of how many people it has affected. So I just, I didn't pursue the legal side of it, although I did send them a legal letter to which, again, I got an AI formulated, uh, empty, just generic response. So then I decided, okay, well, I was planning to build my own website for so many years and I actually subscribed to Squarespace in 2019 before the pandemic hit, I think. 
and just never had time to sit down and build it because I always was like dreading it and putting it off. And I told you a story where I actually ended up going into a uh, graphic designer's agency and hoping they could help me. And they said, no, they would not use Squarespace. They would use their own platform, their own services, their own lifetime, um, you know, uh, what are they called? Like when, if something goes wrong with that website, you'd have to pay them um you know forever <laughs> for them to look into it for example no one else could do it and um so yeah you and and the basic basic of the basic uh thing started at 10k so that didn't go anywhere and then i ended up building my own i mean it's not looking maybe like it was built by an agency but it's it's doing what it's supposed to do once i started working on the um sections there i then realized that they only had the us um shipping in place and for me to do, to be able to do from uk to us or to uk i would have to find another platform and so looking into it i realized that the best one for me was shopify shopify is super super is super professional and actually um anyways where was i um so Shopify is super, super professional. And the point is you then can set things up through them. Now, there's another caveat where they do, um, I think it's every service when you want to, to ship from UK to UK. Um, that didn't work out very well for me at all because I then had to do two years separate and two um, UK separate and it just was really time consuming. So I then basically go to Royal Mail and generate the stickers or the shipping labels. So it's kind of all linked. So we start with Squarespace, we go on to Shopify and then we go into Royal Mail where Etsy, of course, made it easier to navigate everything, but Etsy as a website is lacking that sort of, you know, professionalism. And uh, Shopify allows you to do a lot more and a lot more professionally. So I, I know a lot of businesses that are using Shopify. So uh, I've been with them now for months and I can't complain. Payments are smooth, everything is smooth. Oh, and the other thing is if you use shopify to do every you will then have to make an account with paypal yeah that's it paypal i don't know why i couldn't remember it for a while so you'd have to do an account you have to make an account with paypal and again what happens there which i learned it the hard way and thankfully just with a couple of orders and then I quickly closed that down. PayPal was somehow involved, I think, with Etsy in all of that um, scheme. And this is why I think Etsy was using pay PayPal to be doing uh, that. I think I'm not entirely sure, but somehow then uh, it was the same problem. So PayPal basically would take in the money and not pay me out. And when I contacted them, at least with PayPal, you can actually speak with a person on the phone. Um, they said to me, oh, it's probably because you just um, started using us for a new account, blah, blah, blah. And it should be paid out to you. And it, it wasn't actually paid out straight away. It took weeks. It was paid out then, but there is no reason for them to just take your payments and hold it for no good reason. So everything is, is a little bit uh, complicated and, and confusing once you start, but eventually um, you'll get there. So to summarize it, the easiest way to do is basically, like I said, uh, Squarespace as a website, they're beautifully done, super, super professional, very contemporary. Then Shopify as my online shop because I link it to my uh, website. So the good thing is it's kind of being still worked on. I haven't had time this summer. Um, I was hoping to finalize everything there, adding portfolio, adding my like artwork and things like that. But it's all still, it's functioning as it needs to, but it doesn't have the full package yet. So basically you'll see everything there on the website, my online school, my online shop, and everything that I do is linked there. So it's a good place to have 
rather than having Etsy, you send people to your website and then they get a better idea of who you are as an artist. Uh, if, if you're having a multitude in your business, so for example, if you're only creating stickers, not necessarily do you need uh, to then have a website for it, although you could. You could just have Shopify and forget about the Squarespace because don't forget that I have to pay subscription fees to all of those uh, platforms, right? So depending what sort of uh, your business is, you can then figure out what you need. If it's just about selling one type of product or a couple of products, then just an online shop like Shopify would be great. And then obviously my, you know, Royal Mail just to, to do the uh, shipping labels, which takes a bit longer, but it's worth it because I have actually more control of the information that I put on the shipping labels rather than having Etsy uh, do it for me. About my online school, so currently there is a new online class about watercolor and doodles and it's a great price mark. I didn't do anything as ridiculous as I sometimes, you know, just like fall off my chair from... Um, certain YouTubers that create online courses and give you this whole list that they must have taken some dodgy online course to how to sell you this BS about uh, if you put this together and this and that and that, it comes together to £1,500, for example, um, worth, but you only need to pay 600 What are you talking about? You know, I mean, come on. So, yeah. Th this is just ridiculous. So uh, my most expensive courses never even came to that. And, and I think, you know, people need to be realistic on YouTube. It's just, what are you doing? Stop milking the, the viewers. Just like, stop it. So this course, <laughs> coming back to it, <laughs> can you tell I'm a little bit agitated today? So this course is at a great affordable price. And I think, how much is it? It's £35 roughly speaking, which is like under $45, is it? Something like that when you convert it. And basically you get just under three hours of uh, content for it, which I think is, you know, is quite reasonable if you think about my... So there is a babysitter up the street and I keep laughing about it because she wants to charge £10 for an hour for a babysitter. Are you kidding me? Like, okay, well, are you gonna do the ironing? Are you gonna do my dishwasher as well while you're at it? I'm not gonna pay 10 pounds for them to sit and watch TV. Ridiculous. The babysitter that I used to use just next door, uh, they have grown up, they have um, other jobs that they do and they obviously go out in the evening. So lately they, they haven't been able to do it and, and they used to charge five pounds. So lovely girls, but yeah, no longer. Uh. Um, I think I'll round up this sort of whole YouTube um, bonanza uh, by telling you the other day I watched a Paul Logan documentary on um, on Netflix and it was one of those something to do with fitness and health series and they've done it with many, many like big personalities and um, I never thought... I would actually enjoy it. It just popped up on my Netflix. It's not something I would want to watch. But what I thought was curious is that I knew them, the, the Logan brothers, as these kind of big, huge personalities on YouTube. And they grew this, you know, amazing, like, viral following. And what I thought was fascinating is that suddenly it just started going downhill for them completely. And then they had to reinvent themselves. And Paul, I think he is the younger brother. And what I found really interesting in that documentary is that how he opened up about how tough his relationship with his dad was. And his dad is one of those typical parents that don't accept the wrongdoings. And they still stand by, even though the child openly says, look, you hurt me with what you said or what you did. And you know, you kind of wait for them to say, look, I'm so damn sorry about it. I didn't know better. But they don't. They don't. And, you know, even this big bloke with muscles who's doing boxing, even he, you can see, is so traumatized still. And a lot of his life decisions were based from that. 
And then this father who just doesn't accept it and he thinks he has raised a strong son because of that. And it's just so, so interesting to see these people where you as a child have done to step back and realize, okay, they made those mistakes because they didn't know better. But that parent will never accept that. They will never take the responsibility for the damage they have done. So that was something interesting and obviously how even after this downfall and the, the causation of the downfall, obviously if you want to go really, really, really big on YouTube, you just have to do some crazy stuff and uh, the crazier it is, the more viewers you'll get and the more viral the videos go and that kind of sort of, you know, also made me think, well, it kind of makes it more clear why when you have a growth on YouTube, you get to a time when there is just like a, you hit the plateau. I had a really great few years of growth and it just hit the plateau and it's kind of like stayed almost frozen. I get maybe 10% of what I used to get of new subscribers per per month and it really can be sometimes fr frustrating in the sense that you, you think is it worth my time I mean I love YouTube out of all the platforms YouTube really helped me to you know build my customer base and be able to sell all my products and you know I'm really thankful about that and the community that we build together but at the same time you think well shouldn't YouTube be doing something more to circulate your videos and very often now with YouTube although you know with, with the notifications you ring the bell but still somehow you don't get the notifications all I get on my feeds in YouTube so on the reverse side of the coin um, I don't get those notifications from the videos that I want to see but rather I get some some you know that not necessarily do I want to see like it's just very strange and recently I had also a comment that and I noticed actually in the past whenever my video comes out my regular viewers just would watch it there and then as it comes out because they knew the time and they were looking forward to it so they would watch it and now they sometimes watch it like a day or two later so I then think, well, maybe they didn't have time, but it looks like they were not notified about it. And now that I post only once a week rather than the three times a week, maybe they check in my into my channel less regularly. So I don't know, but there's definitely something a little bit off with YouTube that also has gone downhill in the past few years. And I've seen it even with YouTubers that have, you know, 100K plus viewers same thing it, it was growing 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 and then boom it just freezes so it is what it is but it's just a little bit strange I'd say you know if you dedicated so many years to YouTube you would want to see that kind of growth going and you want to see that YouTube supports you as a creator as well but who knows what the algorithms are and and what plays a role in there and you know whether they just push those silly channels that produce very little kind of um, knowledge based and useful videos but they are just silly and therefore they're watched more and so of course it's probably in YouTube's interest to circulate those videos more than others I don't know I have no idea uh, the final thing I will mention is that I have a sale going on in my online shop Aliona Creates. So if you go onto my website, alionacreates.com and go onto online shop, that will take you then to Shopify, which you don't need to know, <laughs> but <laughs> that's what the build of my online shop is. So you know a little bit behind the scenes. So there you'll find a sale going on for my big watercolor set of the 14 mil watercolor tubes. So it's the ultimate palette so this one here and I am selling it at a amazing sale price because I will be changing the tubes so I will be rebranding them 
this was my first trial and I, you know, I wasn't happy with the caps as I told you from the beginning. Along with the caps, I want to also change the design of the actual tube. So they will be completely uh, redesigned and therefore this is just whatever stock I have, I won't be restocking it. So I just want to basically sell out on the stock that I have and start fresh and start new because I believe the watercolor inside is fantastic. The tube, the, the look of the tube is not so much in my opinion. It's kind of, it's okay, but I don't think it's going with my brand uh, style. So there you go. And uh, check it out. Like I said, it's uh, there while stock lasts. So that is it for August. I think I caught you up on everything that was burning in my mind that I wanted to mention. I really need to do my nails. And today I'm planning to just chill, just do nothing. It's Saturday, it's two o'clock. My boys are coming soon back from tennis. And that's the only time when I get once a week, <laughs> a few hours to myself. And uh, yeah, the sun is out again and I'll probably just go and relax on the sun lounger and just chill out and do nothing. It's going to be one of those days where I just need to recharge my batteries. So I will see you when I am back. But so fresh videos will start in September when school starts. But until then, you'll have loads of videos, loads of watercolor videos every Friday. And I hope you enjoy them. There's still a bunch of books to be reviewed and things to be picked up and um, projects that I need to start in September. So until then, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a fabulous summer and just, you know, enjoying whatever life brings or making the best out of it. Thank you so much and I will see you soon.